Good afternoon, my name is Kate Chima. I'm the head of the Patient Safety Measurement Unit. I'm going to talk to you about measurement, and I know that you are all, all for it. Yes. yes. Fabulous, but I bet you work with lots of people who view it a little bit like Marmite. How many people, quick show of hands, have worked with people who hate it? And how many, if you've worked with anyone who love it? Just out of interest. Oh, a couple. Excellent. That's really good. So it's a bit like a kitchen, full of really useful stuff, but there's always Marmite lurking in the corner. And that's because we tend to use it a lot like this. We're using it to tell people off like naughty school children. And we have this in our heads. Um, and it's often the reason why we choose not to engage with measurement in quite the way that we need to in order to drive improvement forward in a really meaningful way. And part of that is because we think of it in the context of that one face, but actually measurement has many faces. It's not about the data having different faces, it's about how you use it. I just want to talk very quickly about three of those main faces. And the first face I'm going to talk about is the one that we all know and love, measurement for judgment. Now, we often think that that's about rag ratings and doom and gloom, and it's all miserable, but actually in some contexts, it's absolutely necessary. Think about it from our military colleagues' standpoint. If you're in the middle of a war zone, you need data, you need it instantly, you need to make a judgment call on that basis. Same, same with operations within hospital units, for example. So measurement for judgment isn't always bad, but it needs to be in the right context. Our second face is that research bit. I have a research background myself, and I love data. I swim around in it, and I want as much as humanly possible to make sure that I can control for all my variables and make sure that I am genuinely adding to the sum of human knowledge as I build it together. But we don't operate in a controlled lab environment. We're quality improvement professionals. We operate in the real world and it's messy and we want to take our normal processes and make them better through incremental tests of change. This gentleman has made his lawn mowing a happier place to be. I <laughs> and so measurement in that context is quite different from that measurement for judgment approach that we're so used to, um, we're so used to operating in. So it's really about a mindset, and a key part of the mindset when we're thinking about measurement for improvement is to look at, measure, look at our data over time to help us tell the story of our change. This isn't new. It's been happening for 200 years. William Playfair's chart, which is about to turn up, is um, <laughs> a great example of looking at... This is the cost of a quart of wheat uh, against serious contextual indicators how much your average labourer is paid per hour, for example, over time, along with the rains. You can see how the relationships between these things have changed over time and begin to understand the variation. What has changed and why? It's about untangling those threads, understanding that variation and pulling apart uh, what's actually going on within your processes and constantly asking that question, why? Ask the question of your data so that you can get to the absolute, uh, the, the very fabric of your story and weave it together. So that eventually you come to a point where you can stand up and use your data from a measurement for improvement perspective to absolutely tell the story that you need to tell. And Sam's going to tell it. So hello everybody. So I'm going to talk about measurement in the real world, Kate's done the theory. So here we've got a busy A&E department. It's a Monday morning, so it is particularly busy. The staff are working really, really hard to make sure that patients get the best possible care, but it's really tough for them. Patients are waiting a long time, too long. Staff are stressed. Frustratingly, most Mondays are like this. The staff know that. Here's the chief exec of the trust. He's trying to explain to the CCG why performance has declined this month after a period of three months, a trend of improvements over three months. He's annoyed. What's gone wrong? NHS Improvement won the phone earlier, asking precisely the same thing. He spends lots of time looking at data like this. How many of you do the same, I wonder? Lots of people in his trust do. People start circling numbers, different numbers. They start asking questions about what might have happened. Does any of this actually help? So from the experience of the chief exec, it doesn't. So he's got lots of members and teams within his organisation beavering away to make the system better. They've been doing it for months and months and nothing seems to be changing. The performance still fluctuates every day and every month like it did previously. So he wants a different approach. So, SPC to the rescue. Hooray! Um, it's a new way to look at data. So here we can see how long individual patients wait in A&E. The colour coding indicates when they arrived and the height of the bar shows how long they waited. 
So looking at this graph, we can see that there's variation and some patients wait a long time. Looking at data using SPC helps you to understand variation, and in this case, how that impacts upon patients' waiting time. It's not difficult to understand once you've been taught about what it means and how to use it, and that's what we want to focus on in NHS improvement. So here we're looking at daily data over time. The blue line at the bottom is looking at the average wait over the period of three months, and the red line is the worst case scenario wait. This trust has used this data to focus their improvement efforts, and we can see a very dramatic and sustained um, improvement towards the end. This is me and my dad. He's 82 years old. He's got osteoporosis. He's very frail. He's increasingly confused. He's already had two admissions to hospital this year via A&E. If his local trust uses data like this, hopefully next time he falls, he won't have to wait as long. The exciting thing, NHS Improvement has recently developed a tool which enables you to understand data more effectively, which relates to A&E performance. It enables trust to understand what's working well and what isn't working so well. You will notice there is no red and there's no green. Hooray! It will be coming to a trust near you in September. So, have we converted you? Do you want to connect with others who are passionate about measurement for improvement? People that have seen the light. There are already hundreds of us in a virtual community sharing what works well and having discussions. Send me an email to join up. <laughs>